Good morning, you guys. We have got a different type of flight today. We actually have a commercial charter out to Guasa, just a 15 minute flight there and back. I think I have like two passengers going out and probably a full plane load coming back. Let's go ahead and get things pulled out, packed up, and then I'll show you kind of what I need to do to be able to get as many passengers out of Guasa back here as I can because I can't just fill the plane up with nine people. Um, and I'll tell you why in just a minute. Let me show you real quick on what I'm gonna do for fuel. Because it's a beautiful day, it's only 15 minutes out and 15 minutes back. I'm gonna take my minimum fuel that I can out there and back, and in case I have to do maybe like a go around or something like that. So basically, I wanna land back here with around 370 pounds. That gives me about 50 pounds extra, about 10 minutes extra flying, so maybe an extra circuit, or maybe circling around for clouds or something like that. So let me show you what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna go ahead and set minimum fuel and I wanna be landing back here with 370 pounds. So it says I need 545 pounds getting out of here to get me back here with 370 pounds. I've got 200 on this side here, 260 on the other side, so I'm at 460 and we needed 545. So probably less than 50 pounds of fuel, or 50 liters of fuel. So let's get this thing pulled out. These guys are taking out my seats, preparing the cabin. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and do my walk around. I haven't finished that up yet. And then I'll probably help them get everything tied down, strapped up against the wall, and netted how I kind of want it. And then probably by 8.30, we'll be out of here. Let's walk through our weight and balance now because I've got my numbers now. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take out all these seats here. And then we're gonna have 175 kgs of passengers. I'm gonna say the kid's probably 30 which leaves us 145 pounds, divide that by two, so 72 and a half for each of these. So let's just go 70, 70, and five. So we've got 605 kgs of cargo. That's going underneath. We've got 130 up front, 127 in the second pod, and we have 605, let's see, so we had 605 minus 130 minus 127. So we have 348 kgs going on top. We're gonna to split it all the way evenly. So um, 348 divided by three is 116. So 116 in each one of my sections going back. And then I'm also gonna be putting five seats on my hat rack. So we've got five seats back there, and you can see I'm right on my aft CG, but I'm okay with that. It actually makes it a lot easier to flare, to rotate, everything. So we are good to go with the weight and balance the way it is right now. We've got 780 on our total payload, which is exactly what they, the number they gave me. So we're good to go with the loading and how we're gonna do it now.
They should be able to fill these pods up full of weight. 130 in the front, 127 in the back, and then whatever's left over, all this coke and things like that is just gonna be piled up in here as close as tight as we can get. Not good news. I just got word that MAF and the SDAs here have closed the runway. I'm gonna go talk to the SDA pilot now to see if they've got any more information. The guys from here from out there said that they fixed it, but sometimes they just say that, so you go. Now, like I was telling you earlier, I'm not gonna be able to get nine passengers out of there unless I do something very specific, and that is to bring some ballast weight for the front pod. See, the Kodiak does not fill up with nine passengers unless you have some weight up front and the front pod. And usually the people that live out there only come with like a small bag. I mean, that weighs probably like two kgs. So you have nine passengers, you only have like 20 to 30 kgs max in the front pod, which is just not enough to be able to fit all those people without throwing you aft CG. So I'm gonna grab about 30 kgs and that's gonna help out. I just put it underneath the co-pilot seat because I'm shooting a video and I typically don't like having people up front when I'm shooting a video. So I just put it up there for now because everywhere else is just too full up. I have confirmation now from MAF agent who is out on the ground in Guasa. They did do the work earlier this week because MAF had just closed it on Monday, so, and I didn't see the notum that it was closed, so it is a good thing that we got confirmation from them. They said, yes, it has been fixed, according to the guy out there, so you guys can go check it out and assess their work. So let's finally get going. It is 9.40 in the morning now. All right, well, getting off about an hour and a half later than I was kind of originally planning for, but that's all right. Getting out there before 11 o'clock, that's when the winds really start shifting, and as we get closer out there, I'll kind of explain what I'm talking about. Back in 2006, no, 15, when I was flying with MAF for a short time with their air van, I came the closest I've ever come to ripping my gear off at this particular place. So, haven't had any issues like that since, but it was very scary, that's for sure. Let's go ahead and put our fuel in. It was 545, so let's just do 550. And our empty weight is 45. 10. So 69, 84, and 69, 90, that's good. So rotate it, let's say 62 and 74. 74, I want to come back in, and 62 for rotate. Just going up to 8,000 at most. Like I said, there's only a 15 minute flight out there. Whoops. But what I will do is I will record this on here. That way, if you're a flight simmer, you can go to my Patreon page and check out this flight and fly it yourself. It's heading right out of here to Garoka and right over, down over here next to Cora, and it's right over there in that same valley, so not very far away. Let's get our flight plan in here. We used to have a save but we don't anymore, so let's come on back to this page and put it in manually. Broker Tower, November Tango Echo, request taxi, Guasa, 4 POV. November Tango Echo, taxi, runway 17 left, and the back trigger line up, wind light and variable, QNH 1023 
Time check approaching 5-4. 1023, clear to backtrack, line up 17 left, November Tango Echo. Our landing and our pulse light on and our strobe light on. We're clear on the left, clear on the right, helicopter just got back. And we'll do our governor speed check, over speed check right now. Twenty seventy, and then bring it back up and over. So there we go. It's up to twenty two hundred. So we are good on that realm. And just to let you guys know, on the way home, I'm not going to shoot a full video, but I will record the flight back. So I know a lot of you guys would like those time lapses at the end. So if you like a time lapse of what my flight looks like coming back, stay tuned to the end. And I have not been out to Gawasa or landed there. And like, I don't think I ever taken you guys. I've tried before, but I don't think I've ever landed because I had clouds. I haven't been out there in like probably three years or so. All right, we'll be 50 knots by our taxiway or we'll board on the runway. After takeoff, we'll pitch for 85 knots. Considering EPL, consider feather. If we're gonna have to go feather, it's cut off, pull off and shut off 85 then 80 full flaps. We'll only make a turn back if we're over um, 7,000. All right, ignition, inlet, and lights are done. 25 degrees at 5,000, so 1330 for 1380. November Tango Echo, ready for departure. November Tango Echo, runway 17 left, right turn clear for takeoff. 17 left, right turn clear for takeoff, November Tango Echo. Ignition, condition, flaps 20, fuel and harnesses 1330. Rotate 62. Here we go. Thirteen thirty. On seven twenty on the ITT, looking good. Airspeed's coming up over forty. We're continuing. There's sixty two and rotate. ITT just below 740, as close as I can get him at 738, so I'm happy with that. Jim for around 85 knots in the climb out in case I had an engine failure or rollback. Once we're up and over 500 feet, we'll start getting our flaps out over 85 knots. Nose wants to drop. Automatic tram, I'll do a little bit more. We'll go zero degrees of flaps over 90 knots. And then we'll bring our prop on back to 2,000 RPM. And eventually our ITT will kind of settle on down closer to 720. Let's go ahead make our turn out that way. Landing bypass and igniter's off. Departed 5-8, so we'll be getting out there at 1-2 after the hour. Truck Tower, November Tango Echo, departed 5-8. We'll be tracking 213 on climb below 8,000. Gawasa, 1-2. November Tango Echo, on climb below 8,000. Confirm uh, tracking out via the South of Coco. Hey, firm, South of Coco, November Tango Echo. November Tango Echo, South of Coco, contact Mosby, 120.1, HF65908. 1201-65908, South Dakota call, no Vampling Echo. All right, well, we're just about 7,000. Vampling uh, Echo, sorry, second POV. Four POV. Vampling Echo. All right, I'm going to go ahead and shut off my right fuel, because you can see it's, I mean, I am bouncing around. It's a little bit lower, not a lot, by just like 50 pounds or less, but... Q&H, let's go on down to our area, Q&H, probably 1013, and on our standby, just out of habit, let's do that as well. They said it was clear out here. At least they said the circuit was clear. It, I assume that it was clear, clear, but looking ahead, there's, there's definitely some clouds, so I'm assuming that the circuit is clear. I would imagine, because it is a pretty nice day, and everything's kind of just sitting still right now. This particular place, 
um, has a huge drop off at the end. And to get over these bumps right here, I explain. But basically, as the morning goes on, the winds shift a different direction to where you'll have like a headwind kind of on landing, which gives you a tailwind on takeoff. But the problem is, is there's a hill basically halfway down your final that you use as your committed area. So that point on, you're 100% committed to land. You, you don't have enough room um, or maneuverability to get out of the valley because it's a pretty tight valley, like less than a, while, a mile wide. 500. And it's very bumpy these past couple days here. So what happens is you basically call committed, say I'm committed to land, everything looks and feels right, but then as you cross that committed hill, because the wind's coming at you, it's hitting that side of the hill, so it gives you a huge updraft, and then follows immediately by a huge downdraft. So you, you know, you're going idle, I've had to even side slip in there before, and then all of a sudden you have the downdraft because as the wind comes down, it just pushes your plane down. And then you're adding power again, so it's a lot of work. It can be very stressful. And like I said, that was 500. the closest I've ever come to ripping my gear off. I mean, I was so close at the end. And I call those 500. landings. Thank you very much. I call those leg shakers. I mean, just the adrenaline pumping through your body. You just can't even stop your legs from shaking. Thankfully, I haven't had one of those in years, but I remember how they feel, and they are very scary. Morsby 1201, November Tango Echo. Really bumpy today because we've got 13, 14 knots of wind behind me. Hitting all these hills and doing a bunch of swirls all over. See what I mean? Morsby 6598, November Tango Echo. There we go, now I'm far enough, far enough away from him. November Tango Echo, Morsby Echo. November Tango Echo, 13 miles to the southwest, Garoka below 8,000, estimating Guasa 0 niner. November Tango Echo, below 8,000, not important traffic. November Tango Echo. All right, let's go ahead and look at the strip chart. Let's get the autopilot on. These bumps are getting annoying. All right, arrival, Guasa. Landing runway 16, so let's OBS, runway 160. It's aligned so I can have an idea of better how I want to do this. Pretty tight valley. Final is, I mean committed is the hill. 4938 is the elevation. So basically 5000 is going to be my circuit altitude. I'm sorry, 6000. It's a 10% slope, but touchdown I think is like a 4% slope because I just did a new profile on my computer for this. We're making our new strip charts and I'm the one doing all the pictures for them. I think touchdown was like 4% or it was very small and then it goes pretty quickly into 7 and then all the way up max slope of 15%. So it gets pretty steep at the top, that's for sure. But we're not going to add any knots to our VREF coming in, we're 6,900, so 73 knots is going to be our touchdown speed. Our fuel selectors we'll do in a minute, our TAWS is good, we'll do engine inlet and lights. With this much wind I've got coming from this direction, I'm curious to know what's how it's going to play out up here. Because we've got hills up here, all the yellow, and the wind's coming right behind me. so. It might be pretty turbulent in that little valley there. I don't know. We'll play it by ear when we get up there. But, at the hill, power up 20 degrees, left hand turn out. I'm fairly heavy today. I mean, 6,900 pounds, 7,255 is full up. So I'm only 250 pounds under my max gross. So, I'm gonna probably be assessing my final pretty early and if it's looking like there's winds and things like that, tailwinds, um, I don't think we have a max, but typically, I mean, it really kind of goes by your weights. Yeah, we don't have landing 
about four knots, five knots of tailwind is the maximum that I'm willing to take at something like this. Especially with already being heavy I, as I am. It is dry, it hasn't rained out here in the past couple of days, so that's good. All stations go off. Uh, Kodiak number Tango Echo, nine miles to the northeast on descent. Circuit time, Guasa zero niner. Let's go ahead and get our, our fuel back on. We've already talked to our about our abort. There's autopilot off. We're nearly to the valley already. We're gonna fly overhead and then enter into the circuit. Winds are already starting to calm down now that we're getting in a little bit lower into the terrain. Which is good. We'll fly, we'll fly directly over top of another airstrip called Cora, which we used to go to, which is pretty cool. I never landed there, unfortunately, before we closed it, and it's now just a helicopter location. All right, let's get our plane configured for landing and slow on down. We're just two minutes out. Prop and harness is done. Uh, it's still really bumpy. So my guesstimation is that there's going to be potential tailwinds on landing, kind of quartering tailwinds. But I'm hoping once I get down in the valley, it'll be nicer. So I'd rather kind of as, well, let's see, as we get in here, the winds are coming this way, but they're going to be swirling around once we get down lower. So I'm not going to just write off the fact that we might not have updrafts and downdrafts on short final after committed. So every time I'm going to be kind of briefing myself be ready for updrafts and immediately make corrections, but be ready to come back in as fast as possible. Stations Guasa, 1201. November Tango Echo is in the circuit Guasa. Morsby, 6598, November Tango Echo in the circuit Guasa. Report after landing. November Tango Echo, break to the Tango Echo, go ahead. All right, I'm going to turn him off so I don't have to listen to that. We're below 138. I still have 10 knots right here. Not amazing. 6,000 pattern altitude. Turning final. 5550. I've got 12 knots now up here. I'm hoping once we get down in the valley it will drop off though. If not had rain, looking at the smoke there, doesn't look like they have any wind on the ground, which is very encouraging. I don't see any smoke anywhere else in the valley. That can helps kind of just show what the winds are doing on the ground better than a windsock. All right, flap and landing clearance to go. I'm gonna land at the first cone in from the threshold. So about 60 meters in is about where I'm kind of going for past the windsock, which is on the right end. Windsock is just hanging limp. So at least on the ground touchdown, but that does not give me an indication what it's gonna be at my committed area. Actually, now looking at the winds, it might have a little bit of a tailwind. Not much though. I mean, it's really, really slight. So three knots, maybe max, maybe less. Put 20 degrees of flaps now. Uh, this is probably a high, I'd say, Less than a mile wide valley where I'm going to be flying, so it's skinny. Especially when you're full up and have a tailwind for getting out of here. One fifty seven hundred turning base. I've got four knots up here. There'll be tailwind potentially. Seven fifty. Twenty three eighty three ninety three. I'm at ninety three now. Actually, I'm going to go down to 5650 before turning base. I only have a 500 100 feet to lose. Uh, the winds are bouncing around here. Okay, there's my 5650. We're just going to extend it a little bit so I have a little more time to think and get established. All right, seven knot crosswind. Let's go full flaps now. Checklist complete.
headwind, six knots. Ten knot crosswind. Ten knot crosswind. Six knot. Five hundred. Ten knot tailwind. We're not crosswind, so let's drop it. All right, looking good. Two-knot tailwind. I'm committed. Some of those bumps down there. Our front end just came up big time. I don't want to have a tail strike here, you know? So, oh, I'm going to have to walk down there and give them a little talk savvy on what needs to be done because that's not really acceptable. Well, two knot over the numbers, tailwind, so definitely good. That'll be two knots of headwind for takeoff, which is good. Shut down, I'll do some drone footage. Get my packs loaded back up in a time lapse back. Walking down with the MAF agent and then the other guy who is in charge of just the airstrip itself. Like I was saying, just on landing, there was a couple of pretty big bumps down here. And really the biggest thing is when you hit them and you're going 50, 60 miles an hour and you're already kind of AFCG CG just a little bit, it can throw your nose end up really high and you don't want to like have a tail strike or damage the plane. Like this is looking bumpy, but I mean, it's, uh, it's, not, it's not absolutely horrible. So let's go down here and take a look. Three years to build the airstrip. Yeah, three years. Oh wow. I was coordinating this airstrip. Oh, name blow you? Nimson. Nimson, yes, me hold him ding ding. All right, well down here, I think it looks okay. I mean, it's not great. It's not very good condition because this is used by a lot of other operators. And like I said, I haven't been here in like three years. And there's a reason why we don't come here is just because the, the condition is not that great. And we don't need to damage a nose wheel or something like that. So if you can smooth this part right here out, Low here, you go out and up on top, low here, or kind of same. It's just too much of like a, it jumps up too much. So, time plenty where you stop, low ask, low balus. Now, front low balus, and like the wheel goes over that, it just kicks the front end all the way up. Just this plus sport, now on top more yet. And rough low here, Tassel, that's what I'm concerned about more. Like I said, there is a reason why we don't go to every airstrip here in PNG. Just because you can land does not mean you will not damage your plane. And really the one down there is really more of concern than the one up here. Just because your speed's faster over the ground, probably 60 miles an hour when you hit that. Like I was saying, if you have an FCG, it just throws the front end really, really high, really quick. Yeah, I mean, they go same three plus spot. Low here, two, now three. Yeah, it's just this transition right here. It's just too steep. And time you plot finish, you can ring him MAF and talk savvy law. You plot been finished some work, so M can savvy him. Now SDA is two, two plot can come back. Thank you. 